Good morning, fellow woodworkers. Welcome back to another episode of Mathematics and Physics for Woodworkers. And this episode actually got suggested by a viewer. Last time around, we have talked about circles and how to cut in perfect circles, etc. on the Mathematics for Woodworkers series. Link to the whole playlist down in the description. One very important question that I didn't even think about before came to the mind of a viewer. Given something circular, for example, this piece of tensegrity that I have right here. How can I find the center of the circular disk? That is actually a very good question. And this is a theorem for mathematics where you are going to make use of the so-called chords of a circle to get yourself the perfect dead center of any kind of circle there is. And I'm going to demonstrate this theorem to you outside on the other side of the workshop using a bit of chalk and my floor. Now before we can get restarted, let us draw a circle onto the floor. Obviously, we need some kind of circular tabletop or something. <laughs> Next, we need something very straight like this level and also something to measure. Instead of something to measure, you can also use your compass yet again. But we are going to suppose we don't, that we don't have a compass at hand right now. So I'm going to remove the center here, okay? Because we want to find out where the center actually is. I can still see it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mark it here, okay? But for now, what we are going to do is we are going to draw two chords into our circle. What are chords exactly? Well, they are basically just a line which connects two random points on our circle in some kind of way. Let us draw two random arbitrary chords into here. This is the first one. And now on any other place, really doesn't matter where. I'm going to draw a slightly longer one for the second example. And there we go. Now we got our two chords going and what you are going to do now is you are going to find the center of these two chords respectively. Meaning if this one is for example one meter long then we are going to make a mark at 50 centimeters obviously. So let us measure and let's mark the middle of the two lines. And the last thing we now need to do is draw two perpendiculars to our, our lines which pass through our middle points. For this you can use your regular old mitre square or something of that sort. I'm going to use this one that I use for my table saw and also table tops. Okay, perpendiculars, they are going to go 90 degrees away from this line, right through the center point. And now, where the two perpendiculars meet, this is going to be your circle, center. This is the center of your circle, exactly here. And this mathematical theorem actually has a bunch of neat little applications. Actually, I can't see where the original center was anymore. Maybe I have marked it down in the video with a little annotation. I can just hope and guess that this right here is fine at this point, at least up to some error. Obviously, all the lines that I drew with chalk have some kind of dimension, meaning I'm going to have some arrow bounded to my construction that I have here. But overall, this should be pretty much okay for our purposes as a woodworker. And the thinner pencil you use, the better your approximation for the center is going to be overall. Let's take a look at a practical example over at my CNC. And to demonstrate how useful this mathematical technique actually is, we are going to make use of this technique on a coaster, you could say. This is just a very fine, fine piece of <laughs> plywood that I still had lying around. And what we are going to do is we are going to engrave something into it. Just imagine this, you already have coasters lying around, but you don't have a template yet or perfect coordinates for your CNC router that you can put into there such that you know, okay, I have to put my zero there and then I can start en engraving. Just imagine the situation. I actually had this situation before and it was terrible to kind of mm, just eyeball everything and where the center position is. This was only for my um, own stuff at home, but it's still terrible. It's a terrible situation. and. 
it's going to be really useful if you have like a batch production and you wanna basically find the center of a circular coaster, for example, and you wanna engrave it with something, then you can use this technique. You can also use this technique on obviously something like a big tabletop or cutting boards to, to get a juice groove into the air perfectly. All of this is definitely possible, but we are going to try it out on a small example. Let's start engraving. And as easy as that, we got a perfect little these nuts <laughs> coaster. Ah, Comic Sense rules. No, it turned out very nicely, and this method works perfectly. I'm pretty surprised how well it does work um, on such a simple application as basically getting the position of your CNC router right, for example. But there are obviously other applications where you can make use of this um, technique. So for example, um, here small errors can lead to something that is definitely visible on the final piece. So if you move one millimeter on a 10 centimeter disc to the right or left, a bit too much, then obviously what is going to happen is that you're going to see a certain arrow. One millimeter to this side is going to make one millimeter more on that side, meaning we got two millimeters of difference, you could say, on either side. This is going to happen if you're not careful and basically don't go with the technique right. But on bigger things like tabletops, a small difference like one millimeter or two millimeters is never ever going to be noticeable by a normal person, which you are going to create some kind of tabletop for and you wanted to engrave, like for example, such a groove um, on the side of the table. This is something that is definitely possible and just keep this in mind, that arrows can stack up and that you need to be very careful which tools you use for smaller pieces like these coasters. But this is basically it and if you did enjoy what you have seen today, why not make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post regularly over here, especially on mathematics for woodworkers at the moment. And if you do get a kick out of this series, then definitely make sure to check out the playlist Mathematics and Physics for Woodworkers, link down there in the description. You're definitely going to find something in there that is going to be of use for you. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And other than that, you can also buy my handcrafted products over on stemmerch.eu, for example, I still have this piece lying around that someone ordered for the shop. That's the chaotic, kind of chaotic cutting board, mahogany and maple, looking pretty fine. I like this one. And other than that, I thank you guys for watching and please have a flammable day. Stay safe. Ciao. Hey, that's a little outtake. I'm like seriously wondering how close we got to the actual center. So to find out if it's the actual center, think back to what a circle is. It's basically just that the arc of the circle, each and every point on there is the same distance away from the center, the so-called radius. So let's just measure the radius a bunch of times and let's see how close we've actually gotten. So I have no idea what the diameter of the original circle was. So we are just going to measure here. This right here is 80 centimeters. Okay, 80 centimeters from this point that we got up here. Let us see. So this point, 80 centimeters. Now how about this one? Okay, so from the outer arc of the circle, that's about 79.5 centimeters. Meaning we seem to have an arrow of about half a centimeter, which is totally fine for this big of a size. You are nearly not going to notice this much of an arrow. And I mean, if you do this measurement after you have found the center and then basically adjusted a tiny little bit more, then you are going to be in the perfect center at no time at all. So let's take a bunch of more measurements. Let's see. So this right here is um, 77 centimeters. 
and this over here, da -da 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 -da. 77 centimeters once again. Okay, two more. How about this one? 77 centimeters. And our last measurement. This is more about 77.5. So you see, this is actually not bad. And what you also have to take into consideration is the fact that my circle wasn't perfect overall. With a router, you're going to get way more of a precision because of the rigid arm that you're going to use to basically cut it out or on the table saw. But here you can already see that I'm going to have a bit of a neck to my, to my curve. And then basically what happened here is that I pulled too hard on the string probably. So yeah, we are actually pretty close and I'm pretty glad that it worked so nicely on the CNC and also here on the floor too. I'm going to leave this here, then we're going to look a bit more mathematical. And now have a day. Please stay safe. Ciao.